views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Fashionistas Home Edition. I am your host, Larissa Bello. It is a pleasure to have you join us this afternoon. We trust that you and your loved ones are well and staying safe. In today's Bellas by Your Side Chat conversation, we welcome the founder of Milagros Day Worldwide, a nonprofit organization assisting women and families who have been affected by domestic violence. Their mission, turning abuse into success, is a unique approach, leadership-based, utilizing empowerment and personal development philosophies in a supportive healing community. Please join me in welcoming Latina and Puerto Rican Dawn Diaz. Dawn, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Hello, Floricer and Bellas Fashionistas. Thank you. It is my pleasure to be here. It is a pleasure to have you back, Dawn. Thank you so much for your time. Um, I know that it's, it's, it's a beautiful day today, Dawn. It is an absolute beautiful day. Dawn, can you tell us more about Milagros Day Worldwide and what it is that you do? Yes, so Milagros Day Worldwide, we're a nonprofit organization. We've been operating for 10 years. And our mission, like you said, is turning abuse into success. So it's um, taking the experiences of trauma, of domestic violence, of child abuse that many, many women have faced throughout our lifetime and shifting that victim mentality into leadership, into community, into healing, and into purpose. And we do that through our programs like the boot camp where we take women away we do it through the uh transformation academy and just many other great initiatives i know that you have been in existence for over 10 years or just about 10 years now we actually started in 2009 uh december so we have made our 10 years and it's been quite a journey that you've been with us for uh through that journey for a, a long time as well. So thank you for being part of our community. Thank you, thank you. And, and you know, at Bellas Fashionistas, this is your home. So whatever we can do and help you, please do let us know. Yes, I, I, I've I seen you grow. I've seen the great things that you have been doing. And I'm, I'm just very proud of you. I know that you have the boot camp, that you have other programs where you have been assisting many, many women uh, to be able to empower uh, through this process of healing. So I want to commend you for that and congratulations to you and your team for doing this. Thank now, you. Now, Dawn, there, is, there has been a rise um, of domestic violence throughout the pandemic, you know, I, and, and it's, very, it's, it's very sad. It is very sad to see that, unfortunately, we have been, you know, this, this situation has forced us to be more home and I would like for you to give us an insight of what really you have been uh, dealing with throughout these past couple of days. I know that you have been very busy on that end. Please share with us. You know, this pandemic has had effects on society, on people, on, you know, us as humans on so many, so many levels. Just with a normal existence, right? Like someone who just has a regular normal existence is very traumatic. Now, on top of that, imagine being locked up in a home, in a household where you're being abused, where you're being humiliated, where you're being, you know, where you don't feel safe. That completely magnifies the situation, you know, tenfold. And, uh, and that trauma is going to be so much more hard to, you know, survive and uh, 
for the next decade will be dealing with this. So throughout the world, we have been receiving so many reports of domestic violence exponentially increasing. And it attributes to all of the, you know, the the pressures that people are going through and not having the outlets, right? And that's not a justification. It's a magnification. It's a magnification. So now families are having to deal with all of this violence, all of this trauma. And we saw this early on in the crisis and the pandemic, and we started doing support groups uh, at the beginning of March. And it has really, we've really gotten a tremendous response doing these virtual support groups on Zoom. And we took it even further where we created large scale events. So we had the Virtual Survivor Summit where we had 25 speakers come in and speak about all different topics that are relevant, not only to domestic violence survivors, but just, you know, really to everyone who's going through this, um, through this trauma of the pandemic. And, um, and then now also the uh, healing voices, which we're going to be talking about uh, in more in depth later on, which is the new program that you were able to launch virtually, which is great. And, you know, everything is just going technological right now. And I'm so glad that you were able to develop that because I know that there's a lot of people that would like to know how and the when they could be able to connect to be able to kind of stay away from from the violence that they've uh, dealt with and what measures is the state and the city of new york taken uh with the rise of domestic violence you know the governor's office and the mayor's office they've created a new task force that will address these issues more specifically. And um, I know that during our summit, we had Emily Kadar, who is the uh, director of uh, women's services in the uh, governor's office. And she was able to give us a, a lot of resources there. And then also the mayor's office has created a new task force, like I mentioned. Um, and then, but really the grassroots organizations are the ones that are really taking action. And I really want to recommend some, some great grassroots organizations. WARM, We All Really Matter, is a group that takes people and helps them to get hotel rooms when they need to leave their home, brings them food, and actually is giving the resources that people need like immediately on a day-to-day basis. What other resources are being provided to uh, those affected with domestic violence? Yeah, so the Family Justice Center is a resource that I've always recommended throughout, uh, you know, throughout the years. Um, And especially now, they're still, although they're not physically open, they are easily accessible through phone. And so whatever borough that you're in, you can just Google the Family Justice Center and you'll be able to reach them. What are the programs are out there aside from the one that you just mentioned where people could also go and seek these resources? I mostly recommend grassroots organizations because I feel like their missions and their budgets are going 100% towards what it is that they're providing. And, uh, and, and it's amazing because grassroots organizations will make lemons out of lemonade, right? Like they'll be able to create miracles with very, very shoestring budgets. Um, For example, Milagros de Worldwide, right? We've been able to, we've never gotten funding from government or corporations and, and the impact that we've been able to make has been amazing. You know, we have testimonials, we have so much media coverage, we have proclamations, we have, you know, so many awards, and and that's without having any funding. So right now, when you said that, you know, you recognize that we were able to pivot and we were able to shift our operation from a uh, live events into the virtual realm, and 
we've done that with no budget. And so we started doing some fundraising and we've been able to get some small support from, you know, companies and individuals who un who see the impact that we're making so that we can actually upgrade our technology and be able to really reach so many more women uh, virtually. How you recruit your participants to, to attend your events? The great thing is that because we have been operating for 10 years and we have so many graduates and so many uh, amazing success stories, our main route of recruitment is through word of mouth, right? So people recommend, like if someone attends our program, they'll, they'll say, oh my God, my sister needs to, needs to do this. My mom needs to come. My daughter needs to come, you know? And so we, it's, and, and that is really a way to actually heal families when they're able to understand the language and understand the, you know, the cycle of violence and how to break it within the family. So that's really great. Um, so word of mouth for sure is, is one way that we recruit participants. Uh, social media, of course, is, has been uh, you know, a great tool as well and uh, referrals. So, you know, it's really amazing that these large nonprofits, these corporate nonprofits, they refer clients, their clients to Milagros de Worldwide, which says so much about us and about the impact of what we do and about the need for funding for grassroots organizations. Um, and so, you know, we go to we go to fair, like job fairs and health fairs and all different events where we can table and meet the people, meet the public community outreach so that we, you know, bring them in that way. And, you know, now that we're virtual, we're counting really on that word of mouth and on that social media. What is the process of receiving new participants into your program? We will approach uh, domestic violence shelters and let them know what our programs are. And a lot of times they will send a whole group of ladies to our boot camp. Uh, we've had uh, over the past years where we have at our boot camps, we've had like a whole group of like, you know, eight ladies coming from one shelter directly and they give them permission to spend the weekend with us and all of that. So it definitely, you know, they, they definitely understand the value of the, the transformational healing that we provide. We will take a quick break. And when we return, Ms. Diaz will discuss the launch of Healing Voices, a virtual program bringing hope to those affected by domestic violence. Don't go anywhere. We built a media network for you. Bronxnet TV. Come learn in your new state-of-the-art studios at Lehman College. At Mercy College. And coming soon to the South Bronx in the Hub. Inspire with your stories, culture, history. Your Bronx on Bronxnet. Engage with us. Connect with us at your channels and at Bronxnet.tv. Learn. Engage. Inspire. Bronxnet TV. From the Bronx to the world. <laughs> Bronxnet. <laughs> Milagros Day Foundation has developed a program throughout COVID. This virtual healing voices program, can you speak to us more about that? Last fall, uh, we had created the Healing Voices program, which is a 12 week public speaking and trauma healing course, right? And so you would think, what does 
trauma healing have to do with public speaking, right? Well, it has so much to do with it because telling your story is so healing, right? Telling your story is taking away the shame, being able to speak in front of a crowd, to speak on TV, to speak, you know, in a book and an article on the news and the media, wherever you can is the most healing and transformational experience. And so we noticed that throughout the years where we had had our graduates speaking at conferences and at events, and it was just like they would light up up in front of the crowd and see how their words were touching and impacting. And so it was just obvious that we needed to teach a, a, a public speaking program. And through that, there's so many public speaking programs that you can take that is just going to teach you how to speak in public. But what about if you combine the trauma healing, right, and the public speaking? That is something that does not exist. And that's something that Milagros de Worldwide is proud and honored to be providing right now. So in the fall, we went ahead and we had this phenomenal program. We had 15 ladies that went through it. We met in person for 12 weeks. Every Tuesday, we met for three hours. And it was just, you know, the bonding, the, the trust, the healing, the crying, the laughing, the shifting of the victim mentality, the confidence, you know, the, the poise, the grace that they were able to embody throughout this program. And, and we recorded every session. So you're able to see the, the, the metamorphosis, the transformation from day one to the final day when they're on stage. And so we were, we had the, you know, we were able to do this on a live studio audience where people were there and it was recorded beautifully, very top notch, professionally recorded. And so we have that footage. And that is now something that we're going to use in this virtual training. So we'll, so the first step of this virtual training, Healing Voices Virtual, is that we're going to be screening that, 12, that event that took place back in December, where 15 ladies, 15 beautiful women are able to tell their stories. And they're talking about not only domestic violence, they're talking about child abuse. They're talking about, you know, just violence, like gang violence. They're talking about, uh, you know, loss, like it's trauma all the way around. And, um, and so we're going to be airing that for 90 minutes. And then after that is going to be a Q&A with those ladies. So we're really very excited about that. And from there, we'll be giving people the opportunity to say, okay, now do you want to tell your story? You can tell your story too. How many people can attend this event? The event is going to be open to the public. It's going to be on Zoom and everyone is welcome men women of all ages of all genders and after that once they see the healing voices program once they see the q a of the ladies then they'll be able to apply if they feel that they that they can benefit from this program themselves they'll be able to submit an application and then be considered to be part of the next cohort. Um, and actually, we can have up to 25 ladies probably because now these ladies here are going to be the mentors. They're going to be the coaches. They're going to be the ones taking the uh, new ladies on this journey. You had mentioned that only women and anyone can attend, but are there children that attend this type of event? In terms of the the screening of the uh, of the Healing Voices program, I I think that you know. Let me tell you something. If there are kids that are going through trauma right now, that are going through abuse right now, there's not much that they haven't seen, and so. I would recommend anyone that can watch this program. Now, in terms of our cohort and the people that are going to be joining the next course, it's it will be adults uh, 18 and over. How many days is this course for this uh, new cohort that you're tr 
trying to have? It's going to be 12 weeks, the same way that the original program was, but it's going to be virtual. And, you know, 12 weeks is three months. So I'm, we're going to be ending and finishing this in the fall. And so who knows, maybe by then we will be able to get together and actually see them graduate in person. But, uh, you know, for now, we will move forward with the virtual program. How many times out of the week do you meet with, with the participants? It's a 12-week program, and it'll be once a week. The day of the week is it, we will decide that once we have the participants and to see what works for everyone. Could you talk to us about the other programs that, that Minagros Day has as well, aside from, from the um, from the Healing Voices program? Our boot camp is our premier flagship program. That is where we take women away for three days. Uh, normally it was from a Friday morning to a Sunday night. And through that, we would take them on a bus up to the mountains in New Jersey or Pennsylvania or upstate New York and just create this life changing experience, right? Uh, for physical challenges, emotional challenges, spiritual challenges, to really shift that victim mentality and to have them see and realize that they are worthy and that they have a community and that they have support and that they have a voice and that, you know, life is possible, that change and shift and, and opportunities and purpose is possible. And so obviously right now that is on hold, uh, but that, you know, our goal and our dream and vision for, you know, going forward for is, is to have our own retreat center to be able to do those retreats, not only once a year, but every like every two or three months. And on, on having additional programs aside from boot camp and the Healing Voices, turning that into a virtual program? Right now, we're going to focus on Healing Voices. Uh, however... You know, all of our programs, we have the uh, the curriculums, we have the testimonials, we have the proof of concept, and we have so much uh, content on YouTube and on uh, social media. So our, our YouTube, Milagros de Worldwide, is a place where even if someone never met me and never came to our programs, someone who lives in California or in, you know, Venezuela or anywhere in the world, they can actually receive the healing from going to our YouTube. How does Milagros Day turn abuse into success? Turning abuse into success is our tagline. And it's really about changing your mind, right? It's, a, it's about shifting the victim mentality. It's about taking those experiences that you've been through and the skills that you had to develop. Because when you're a survivor, you develop so many skills that are normal people people normal quote unquote don't have right you're you're so vigilant you're so perceptive you're so creative you're so resourceful because you have to be in order to survive right and so if you take all of those skills and you shift your mentality of who you believe that you are then you're able to see your value and you're able to see that all of that experience that you had, you could turn that into success. And so that's that's why we call it turning abuse into success because all the resources, everything that you need is inside you. And when you are in a community that shows that to you like a mirror, then you're able to see it and you're able to reach into it and actually you know, put it into action. Is there a hotline for Milagros Day? We don't have a hotline where someone can call, but through our social media, we can be easily reached, immediately reached, and we will respond right away. What are the resources and organizations um, can't, is 
are you guys working together with? We actually have partnerships with grassroots organizations, as always, because that, you know, that's closest to my heart. So we have Casa Esperanza para Mujeres y Niños. It's a very long name and it's in Spanish, but that is, um, it's, a, it's a great group that started their mission started started with, um, with women that were affected by HIV, and then they realized that domestic violence was an underlying condition. And so they have shifted more towards supporting women and preventing those types of, you know, situations uh, for women that have been through um, domestic violence. They actually have a... Uh, a facility in Puerto Rico in Bayamón, and uh, they're converting that into a uh, into a training center where they will be offering trainings for uh, employment, such as uh, you know medical records uh, trainings and uh, home attendant certifications and things like that, so that women can get that financial freedom. And uh, Milagros de Worldwide, we're very, very, you know, closely working with them and we'll be able to provide our boot camp in Puerto Rico to those ladies that are part of their program. Um, so that's one great partnership that we have. Uh, there's Hunks for Hope, which is, um, it's, it's run, it actually involves men and they're men who are hunks, right? So men that are physically fit, who take a stand for women's, so for supporting women, for, you know, respecting women, for honoring women. And so Hunks for Hope is a great organization that has uh, supported Milagros de Worldwide for years. And they, you know, they do annual fundraisers, they do a calendar, and they always, uh, you know, give us the funds between us and Casa Esperanza. So it's like a three-way partnership that we have with them. Um, and then we have the Global Sisterhood. Uh, the Global Sisterhood is, it's a global international organization that supports grassroots movements of women that have created different grassroots organizations throughout the world. They do a lot of work in Africa. They do, uh, uh, you know, Africa is one of their biggest uh, areas. And so the major um uh, initiative that they support in, in, in the United States is Milagros de Worldwide. And so they've actually just given us a, a small grant to begin our uh, technology uh, upgrades as well. So, um, so those are the, the great partnerships that we have. Thank you so much, Dorn, for joining us and providing all this instrumental information of your nonprofit organization. I wish you the best and that you continue to help all those uh, affected with domestic violence. How can people contact you? So our website is milagrosday.org. Our YouTube, Milagros Day Worldwide. Our Instagram and Facebook, Turning Abuse into Success. Make sure that you go to milagrosday.org and be able to sign up for their soon to come event. Be sure to follow us on social media at Bellas Fashionistas and our media partner at BronxNet TV. To watch more of our programming, please visit our websites at bellasfashionistas.com and our media partner at bronxnet.org. Thank you so much. Have a great day.